Hi, welcome to the next video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. Um, we are talking about classification and regression trees. And specifically in this video, we'll talk about how we actually grow these trees. Um, so the idea here is that we start with an empty tree, which just consists of the root node in which all the data lies, basically. Yeah. And then we grow the tree by basically doing the same thing over and over to each of the nodes in the tree. So in that sense, it's a recursive procedure. And the way that we do it is that every time we look at a terminal node, we try to split it in the best possible way. Yeah, so that's greedy optimization. We're just looking at the current uh, data that we have and we just try to find a split that is as good as possible. So a greedy search means that we're doing a complete and exhaustive search, all the possible ways in which we could split the data in that node into uh, two parts yeah, are investigated. That means I have to look at all possible thresholds for the split T for all the features X, J, yeah. all of them, I have to look at all of them and I compare them in terms of their empirical risk. We talked about that in the previous video about splitting criteria. Yeah. And I'm only using the absolute best one. And then these data are distributed to the child nodes according to the optimal split I found. And then I repeat the same thing again. Yeah. Repeat the procedure in these child nodes. Um, okay, so let's try to visualize that for the iris data. Yeah, so um, this is the situation after the first split. So I start out with all my data in the root node, and then um, I look at all possible split points along petal length and at all possible split points along petal width. Yeah, and um, in this case, I probably have two splits that are, well, the same because I could either do a horizontal split like this or I could do a vertical split like this. In both cases, I would end up with this distribution of the data, right? So I would end up with one pure node of Setosa and one node that is about 50-50 between Versicolor and Virginica. Yeah, that one here. Um, all right, <clears throat> good. Um, so, and the way that I've found the split point is I've minimized the empirical risk in a child node. So in that case, so, I don't know, either minimizing the price or, or um, the, <clears throat> the logistic loss, yeah? Mm, Benoli loss, sorry. Um, okay, then I proceed. So now this, child node here, yeah, so this, these are the data here, this, this child node, I can't split any further because it's already perfect, it's pure, um, but on the other side, I can do additional splits. So um, now, again, I'm looking over all possible split points along pizza length, so in the horizontal direction, and I'm looking at all possible split points along pizza width, and it turns out that, uh, well, if I compare them by their empirical risk, the best thing I can do is split these data up further um, according to pedal width at point 1.8. Yeah, so now I have uh, two very pure nodes already. This one is 98% Virginica and the other one is 91% Versicolor. Yeah, and you see there is some misclassification happening here. So I have um, this one observation here that's Versicolor that gets classified as Virginica and I have these one, two, three, four, five um, <clears throat> Virginica plants that are misclassified as Versicolor down here. Yeah, um, so I can Again, try to make this better. So I'm subdividing again this node yeah, by 
pita length five and I end up with this um, well very good tree that classifies almost all the observations uh, pretty much perfectly um, all right <clears throat> now it's clear that on on real data sets the location of the thresholds isn't really uniquely determined because any threshold that I put between the value of this observation here and the value of this observation here will yield the same assignment of data to the child nodes. Yeah. So what we typically do is we use the midpoint between the observations um, that they are, that they split. Yeah. Um, the midpoint because the larger this margin is, the better we expect that tree to generalize. Okay. Um, that's it for this chapter. Thank you for listening.